which was launched in 1940. It's prefabricated and built for patrol and escort duties, which the RAF used in the air-sea rescue role. This particular craft is 112 feet long and 18 foot 4 wide. But if the Navy is nearer, the Air Force calls on the Navy. Lives depend on these rescuers and on the dinghy. The ubiquitous Fairmile Type B rescue launch is well armed. It's powered by two all Scott petrol engines giving out 1,220 brake horsepower. So she'll fly along at a respectable 18 to 20 knots. It's a small thing to look for at Inge, but the launch will be guided by the search planes. By air and sea, the eyes of Britain seek the men who've done their job for Britain and haven't got back. In the incessant raids of Bomber Command, some air crews must ditch, and they may drift hours or days and their lives depend upon the speed and skill of the searchers. Sighted! And the plane drops a smoke float to guide the launch to the spot. This crew is lucky. Their rescue came soon. The time has come to reveal the latest British heavy bomber of this war. It is to be called the Lancaster. It will be operational by this Christmas 1941 and will replace one and five group Hamden equipped squadrons of Lincolnshire. The Lancaster is a direct descendant of the ill-fated twin-engined Manchester, which has proved so unreliable as a medium bomber. The main problem appears to be with its two Rolls-Royce Vulture engines. The Avro Lancaster is powered by four tried and tested Merlin engines, which can propel it along at some 275 miles an hour. But the twin-engined Manchester has also been in trouble with its tail unit meant that some models have employed a triple fin arrangement to help with handling problems. The Lancaster has a wingspan of just over 100 feet and is equipped with three hydraulically power-operated turrets. Full bang on, is it? Yes, everything's bang on, sir. Right here. The Lancaster can carry 14,000 pounds of bombs for some 1,600 miles. The seven-man crew includes the pilot, flight engineer, navigator, bomb aimer, wireless operator, mid, upper and rear air gunners who are all specialists, all trained to fly as a team. It cannot hold its own against determined daylight fighter attacks, but it can deliver sufficient firepower to defend itself at night. has a maximum ceiling of 22,000 feet. The Lank can easily fly on three engines, and pilots say it can manage on two, and even limp away on one if necessary. Perhaps this is the aircraft that Bomber Command has been looking for to smash the Third Reich. Let us all hope so.